Let's take a look at some of the most common sports medicine injuries to the shoulder. This is uh, the shoulder sort of apparatus here. We got the clavicle, we got the, the scapula back here, the acromion process, the humerus, and the head of the humerus. The, uh, when people get hit, I've had a lot of, just had uh, some hockey players get hit, and the force when they hit the end of the, the shoulder here can actually cause this joint, the AC joint, to buckle and it can pop, and we call that a shoulder separation. So it's a separation at the uh, acromioclavicular joint. The other thing that can happen that's related to a shoulder separation but is different is a shoulder dislocation. This is the head of the humerus. Uh, think of the head of the humerus, and it sits in a ball and socket joint. Think of the head of the humerus as the ball, and the socket is like a golf tee. Well, there's a, uh, a thick fibrous covering that goes around the, the top of the golf tee called the labrum. And what can happen is if the head of the humerus is shoved forward or shoved back, the, uh, the labrum, which normally holds it solidly in space, can be torn. And that's called a labral tear. And when people have a lot of pain in their shoulder, after a situation where they had a dislocation, that could be a labral tear. The time that that happens a lot is when you're in an outstretched arm position and you fall. Uh, the reason is, is if you think about right here, your pec is in a lengthened position. So your pec is relatively weak. But your lat, which reaches up here, your two main shoulder stabilizers are in their longest position. And when they're in their longest position, they're in their weakest position. So the other things that we have stabilizing the shoulder, we have pec minor reaching up, and then we have all of the short little muscles that uh, come into a stabilizing role. But uh, they don't really stabilize the, and, and keep the, the joint in the ball and socket position. So to, to make that type of diagnosis, a lot of times it's an MRI. A lot of times it's an exam by an orthopedic surgeon or another sports medicine physician. The other sort of traumatic type of injury that can happen is uh, the rotator cuff muscles. Supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and teres minor. But most commonly, infraspinatus and supraspinatus can be torn. And it's not really the muscle that gets torn because the muscle is pretty strong, but the muscle reaches out and the muscle basically turns into tendon and tendon connects muscle to bone. And basically right where the tendons, they insert together posteriorly and then subscapularis inserts anteriorly, the tendon can actually pull off the bone. And when it pulls off the bone, that means when the muscle contracts, it's just pulling in space. Now, some people can have what's called a partial tear. And when you get a partial tear, the, 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 the function, the overall function of the cuff can basically be rehabbed by, by physical therapy and yoga and things like that. But sometimes in a total tear, uh, what they need to do is they need to go in and actually grab that uh, tendon and anchor it back down to the bone. So we've got um, the rotator cuff injuries. Uh, the rotator cuff muscles basically are these, uh, you can visualize them as stabilizers, but you can also visualize them as pulleys. And pulleys, when they're uh, functioning, need to be highly lubricated and uh, allow for very fluid movement. The, 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 mechanism that we have in the human body for achieving that is something called a bursa. And these are basically like fluid-filled sacs that surround the muscles and the ligaments. And what they do is they allow for fluid movement. But when there's inflammation or trauma, so let's say you repetitively sort of jam the head of the humerus up against the acromion process. If you repetitively do that, that can lead to trauma, and that trauma can uh, lead to what's called bursitis, or inflammation of 
the, uh, the connective tissue that surrounds all of those ligaments. When that happens, people can have a lot of pain and they can have a lot of pain and impingement when they lift their arm. A big part of that is because when they lift their arm, they're lifting their whole shoulder. And so all of this comes up and they jam the head of the humerus into this thing called the acromion. Now, one of the surgical treatments of that is they take a little drill and they shave this off so they create a little bit more space in there so there's less impingement. But the other thing is, is by learning how to have appropriate stabilization with these bigger muscles and keeping the head of the humerus down, then fluid movement happens and the ball stays in the ball and socket and it doesn't come up. And then by not traumatizing this area, that can sometimes improve the symptoms of the bursitis. There's a lot of other things from in terms of medical modalities like ice and anti-inflammatories and things like that that are used by a lot of people. Uh, but just appropriate movement can be extremely helpful for working with people with those types of uh, symptoms. The, there are many things that we just covered from traumatic things to just sort of poor biomechanics that lead to inflammation. Any one of those or a surgery can lead to one more thing that I'd like to just tell you a little bit about, which is something called adhesive capsulitis or frozen shoulder. When we start to have inflammation and pain, sometimes that can lead to a lack of movement. And then all of a sudden, the muscles can start to tighten down and not engage in their full range of motion. So the shoulder likes to come all the way forward, all the way back. It likes to move in space, sort of through all of these ranges of motion. But when, uh, when an insult happens and we start to lose movement, sometimes, and you know, especially in women, women in their 50s, um, this can happen. I see a lot of people who do a lot of yoga and they do a lot of chaturanga, a lot of push-ups, but they don't quite have the strength to have stability. And then uh, it can be a fairly trying thing to overcome that. A lot of people end up uh, having surgery. Some people have manipulation under anesthesia to overcome it. But uh, a lot of yogi techniques can help with the frozen shoulder. And then more importantly, you want to learn how to move the arm in space so that you don't get that problem. And that's basically what we're going to be teaching teaching when to use the anterior muscles, when to use the posterior muscles, and then when to kind of have both groups of muscles soft, but integrated and stabilizing so that the, the entire shoulder girdle is on and stable and connected. And that's going to be the name of the game, because then you're going to be prepared to move in any direction that you need to. So I hope that's helpful.